Jackson Tark for Moser now. Pounced, races away, and won like a champion. Won it by two lengths. Can he do it to Tarkwa? He's flying. Yes, there's history. Chautauqua makes it three in a row. And he stood there, he didn't come out, he refuses to leave the barrier. We've done everything we can, but you know what? If you don't want to do it, you don't want to do it, and guess what? He doesn't want to do it anymore. Showing is a pretty pony. It's fashions on the field, but in horse style. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and now he's here. We can start the journey. Welcome to the training of, of Chautauqua. Let him stretch in the trot, let him circle. I'd like to see him successful as the horse, yep. not successful because he's Chautauqua. If the horse doesn't go out there and he doesn't work and he's not good enough, the horse is not going to win. How yeah, would you be if the horse ended up going to the Olympic Games and winning a gold medal, something crazy like that? But, as I said, he'll, he'll be able to do anything he wants. He's always been sensitive with anything that I try and do around his face. So I've normally used baby oil and I've just started to add some chalk to the baby oil to give him a bit of a look of having some makeup on. So bearing in mind, it's probably not gonna be neat, like he's gonna be out of the show because he still protests it, he doesn't like it. But unfortunately, whether he likes it or not, he's actually got to get used to it. So just rub a bit of chalk into my hands like so. And then I get a little bit of baby oil and I rub it together. So this is a really good look for me. And as you'll see, it's gonna go on and it's probably not gonna look that neat when it's on him because he will protest. But this is just something that every time I ride him, I do all the time because he's just, he's gotta get used to it. So then we just try and get him to come down and I just smear it on his nose and face like so. So as you can see, he hates it and it's certainly not neat on him as in like what it will be when he goes out. But you can see that he's starting to accept the fact that he gets stuff around his eyes. He knows that after he gets this and you can see him trying to do it, because as I said, I'm always packing. <laughs> and when I mean packing, when he does something right, there's his treat. certainly not been easy with the uh, coronavirus, very challenging moments and to be honest I'm getting a little bit sick of just having to work him in the same space but I don't think that at the end of the day my journey wouldn't be possible without the help of my riding instructor Lee Dunstan. He's just been imperative for our training, for me as a rider, keeping myself a little bit sane and telling myself that I'm working towards an end goal so we can't wait to come out the other side. Good boy. Come. Okay, yeah. Good. Good. I've been a riding instructor and worked on show horses, show and dressage horses for the last 40 years, most of my life, really. When I first saw Chautauqua, I mean, obviously, everyone knows who he is. I thought, this is a horse that could well be a pretty handy show horse. He's got all the attributes. It doesn't just happen immediately that they become from a racehorse to a show horse. It's a, it's a process, but he's going along very nicely in that process. A couple of things, you know, he's just relaxing more and more with his work. And the, the more he relaxes, the better he goes. I gave him a heads up once that there was a possibility that I'd get Chautauqua and he was quietly jumping for joy inside. So to be able to give Lee a horse that he'd watched all through his racing career with a, with a rider that he's taught virtually since she was eight years old, I think that it's wonderful for the two of us to be teaming up and, and trying to do it all again. They're forming a, a nice little team. He's beginning to trust her, she's trusting him, they know each other, he knows his routine. And horses love a bit of routine, you know, they just relax into that. Okay. Hmm? Good day. Yeah. I'm really liking the way that he's starting to be soft and smooth and, and enjoying the work that we're giving, you know, like every time we add in something new, it seems like, oh, there's another challenge and off he runs with it. Look, he has three very good natural paces. He's got a good walk, a good trot and an absolutely stunning canter. The key is for showing that he's got to be able to show these paces in a relaxed manner. 
and an obedient manner. So that's my job. But I couldn't be happier with how he's coming along. Short-term goals for Chautauqua moving forward would be definitely getting him out somewhere to places where he can work in different environments where he's not comfortable. Here he's comfortable. He knows this is home. So either a pony club or an adult riding club or, as I mentioned before, a dressage day. I'd prefer to keep him away from the shows for now just because he's not ready, but he definitely needs to be out and moving from here on in. I've had some beautiful champion horses over the years. But uh, Chautauqua excites me because he, he might be the best yet. I unfortunately, last year in December, lost, lost my dad to cancer. But prior to that, Rob has been someone that ever since I was an apprentice in the industry, you sort of came about and you took me under your wing, didn't you? You've sort of been one of those people that, to me, has been a real mentor in life. And there's no sort of topic, know anything that yeah. I can't talk to you about. And, and really... And, and Vicky Verger. Um, I'd be walking through the mounting garden, people like Sally Wynn or... Nikita. Nikita Berman. Hey, Dad, Dad! And of course, everyone, everyone around... Everyone calls him Dad. Everyone would be going, what? How many children have you got? So it was sort of... I was a bit of a clucky hen with, with the kids. For my own dad to realise that in life, with his cancer, he can't sort of be here to look after me, but then there's somebody else here that's, that's taken those reins and will always have my back. And I think as a girl, I'm just so proud that I've got someone in my life that's, that's as good as Rob. Well, I'll put a bale of hay out there or a bale of lucerne out there later today, just in the middle of the yard. Yep. And uh, I'll sit on it probably for a couple of hours and uh, just sit on it. Uh, I'll probably listen to the races and I'll just let him come up and sniff me, get to know me, know my smells, know, you know, and we'll just get to know one another. And hopefully we, uh, we start a good friendship. Geelong's just over an hour's drive from where I live, so it's a nice, comfortable drive down to the track here. And I like to be at the races at least two hours before race one. That gives me time to troubleshoot any technical issues that I have with my gear before the race day starts. And we quite often do previews for the radio as well as racing.com. Then the race day gets underway and you get into a process where the runners come into the mounting yard and you see the jockeys line out of the room and that's when I start to learn the colours for a race and that's done right up until basically the time that the horses load. The Geelong Callers box is almost right on the line, we're just a fraction before it and we have a pretty good elevation so it's a, it's a nice track. The only little blind spot that we have from the Callers box is with the turn out of the home straight with the judges room between that point and where we stand and call the races from. Uh, look, it's really easy to get carried away with a horse's maiden win because then obviously they have to go up in grade and try and reproduce that win again. So there are ones that stand out, but a lot of the time, even the spectacular victories of horses in maidens aren't replicated again in their career. So I've been around long enough to know to try and keep things tempered a little bit. And the two favourites with uh, Chautauqua clearly being the standout of the two in the market. <laughs> this is going to be pretty self-deprecating, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so this was the basis for me calling the horse as I called it on this particular day. Chautauqua. So it's a, just a reference online. I hadn't called the horse in either of its two starts, so as I try to do when I see a horse with such an unfamiliar name, I'll do a, a, an online search, whether it's via Google. I have a couple of uh, name resource websites that I like to use as well. Chautauqua. That's what came out to me, so that's how I called the horse in the race.
<laughs> he's, he's got he has got a mic of his own. Once he started to have a little bit of a ride around, he was great. Was he? Yeah. Then we got him measured. Are you happy with the way he's going? Oh, look, the work's excellent. Yeah. There's not a week that goes by where Chautauqua isn't mentioned in some form, isn't it, Pete? Nearly every, nearly every week. Absolutely. You, you, you see people and uh, you mightn't see them for three or four months and the first thing they ask you is, yes, where's Chautauqua? What's he doing? You know, it's, it's quite incredible. And even in the media, like, there's always something, something about one of the, you know, the Hong Kong or the or the third TJ or something, they just keep playing them and playing them. It's, and we always have goosebumps every time we watch them right through. It's fantastic. Never taking anything away from horses like your Winxes and Back Caviars. I mean, they were just once in a lifetime horses as well, but he did something that was different, you know? He just won from positions that most horses couldn't win from. You know, I still look at him as a racehorse, not as a show horse. Once he turns into a show horse, it'll probably be something different. Still, he's the racehorse we always remembered him for being. But can't wait to get him out there, I know that. Okay. So we've got Lankin Rupee here. He's excited to see his old racing mates. I think it's a really great opportunity. I think it's a beautiful uh, showcase of what thoroughbreds are about, how they're you know, developing in their life post racing and where they're going to go to after here. Mm. You're the man. Hartnell, probably his biggest day out, and he's been really good. I'm actually quite surprised. But no, he's, he's pretty good, so I can't wait to get on him and go for a ride and catch up with the others as well. So yeah, looking forward to it. And we were saying before that precedence is aptly named. Yeah. Um, with his new career. Can you tell us what, what we mean by that? Yeah, well, I think um, he sets a precedence for, for top horses that have been on the track to then have a life after racing and a second career. So I think it's quite fitting, um, yeah, with his name there, definitely. Hopefully he'll be able to go out there and show, show the boys some of the things that he's learnt over the last couple of years and it's all things for them to, to come forward and learn and, and do as well. Just let them, let them stand together like they're in a lineup. He's fast, just like you, bud. Be nice. Be good. Can we have some bets? Make it interesting. So guys, look, five minutes of just walking, do some little loops, little serpentines, that sort of thing. We're gonna get work out about 30 metres from that, that path over there, all, all this kind of mode area, okay? Casey, you lead. Am I leading, am I? God, sharks, pressure's on. Here we go, round we go. Just increase and decrease the circle, and then once you've done that a couple of times, change rein. That's what we want. We're off. Down and go, shut. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. Actually, really impressed. I was just talking before, and people who know more about this than what I do, and they said he's just such, you know, he's relaxed and he's doing everything that he should be doing out there, which is great. You've got to be pretty impressed with what he's doing. Yeah, I think I've worked it out. I think we've got um, Chitaupa um, leading, Hartnell, looks a bit still raw. And then we've got behind him Precedence, who looks like he's born to do it. And then behind him, you've got Lankan Rupee. Look, it's a totally different environment for them. And depending on the nature of the horse, I mean, some may adapt to it you know, quicker than others, but I reckon Chitaupa's done well for the short time he's been in it with the quirky character he's got. So I think he's adapted very well to it. OK, guys, that's enough. Thanks very much. Well done. Oh, look, I, I think for anybody, this is just the best possible day to show that each one of us four girls have our horses wholly and solely at the forefront of our hearts. Like, we love our animals. It's all about camaraderie. We all get together. And as you can see, it's all about our horses. So I think at the end of the day, having these four horses here to showcase what this beautiful breed is, which is the thoroughbred, um, I think this is an amazing day. And, and moving forward for any superstar that's coming off the track, you don't have to win 22 million or, you know, you can just be anybody coming off the track and look at what you've got. Yeah, um, it's, I think it's absolutely huge as well. It's great to see so many of these amazing horses come together on the day and showcase what they're now doing after racing. Yeah, today was Hartnell's big day out. He's never sort of been anywhere this spacious or with other horses. He was a little bit hot to start with, but we gradually got through it and that's what you want to do. 
you don't want to get up them or anything like that. You've just got to make them relax, work through it, and then go on to your next phase, whether you trot or walk or canter. You're where I was last week. <laughs> <laughs> but I oh, look, towards the end, he, he was really good, so I couldn't be happier with him. And Shirley will be able to tell you what precedence was like as he started. Shirley started him in Crown Street, and so he, he'll get to that because, yeah. It was interesting. <laughs> but I'm seeing your boy get cheeky too, Chanel. Like, we, let's not about our three cheeksters. Yours is just as good. I have my work cut out for me. <laughs> <laughs> let's put it this way. It takes a patient rider with these four horses, let me tell you. And I think all of us are oozing yeah, patience, patient. are we not? Yeah. I think it's fantastic for them to get out and to be able to not only show what the thoroughbreds can do, but Lankin in himself was his own champion, and every single one of them are. And to put a whole heap of champions together, that's a royal lineup right there. <laughs> that's a royal lineup. And whether you look at it from a show perspective or whether you look at it from a racing perspective, I don't think you can get much better than what the company we've got here today. Yeah, it's, it, hasn't been, it hasn't been an easy road by, yeah. by any imagination, but um, yeah, it's just, you've got to get them out and get some miles under their belt, and they've got to start somewhere. So sometimes you've just got to do what Shirley's done today is pop them in the deep end and away we go. But I think it's really important that the public do see that these horses have a life after racing and not just the champions it, it's horses that don't haven't won a race or didn't even get to didn't the track get to the race yeah, yeah they, they might I've have done a prep. Yeah, I've, yeah i've got a two-year-old filly at home that was sacked um, for, um in new south wales so she's now growing in the paddock but she will have a life after racing and i think what these ladies do is have some has some focus on the fact that hey look what these horses can do they're amazing thoroughbreds they're so versatile well, well done, girls, honestly. Yeah, and I, well done, and it's been a hard job to get us all together, but I think at the end of the day, we got here, the weather's been appalling leading into today, so I'm glad that we got a little bit of a space, but girls, I can't, um, for all my messaging to try and work out what day worked and what day didn't, I'm so glad we got it off the ground, so thanks, yeah. girls. Bring on a positive 2021. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> In the show ring. Giddy up. I think I couldn't be happier with how he's performed for me today and I think seeing that it's probably not too far now until I decide that I might bring him out. So um, he's given me a really good day and he's given me confidence that he's not going to make it a deal of himself whenever he goes out. And I think that uh, all things moving forward, we're not too far away from stage three of the Chautauqua story. Venture to say is the best horse uh, competing here at Geelong today go on and win plenty more off that. So I rode Chautauqua a few times, a couple of his trials leading up to his first start that preparation. And I also had galloped him on a numerous occasions at home at Flemington. But um, I think Dwayne Dunn was suspended or injured. It was the only reason I was actually riding him at Geelong that day. So I was lucky enough to get the call up a week or two out. I knew well and truly in advance I was always riding him. And I was pretty confident going into a maiden at Geelong on a whatever day it was that he would be pretty hard to beat anyway. Artine left best off the inside and landed about a half length in front of Charge Moore and Chautauqua. So he broke quite cleanly, jumped straight into the bridle and from that point on was pretty confident he was either going to end up outside the leader or probably lead. Just the way his natural tendency was to get going a little bit, being a bit highly strung as a young horse. And from that point it was, I was probably going to be able to control the race wherever I ended up, either at the leading or outside the leader. The thing that stands out about this race, even though it is a small field, is that the horse led. He jumped straight to the front, he dictated terms, he kicked away at the top of the home straight. But at that level, at maiden level, I'm sure you could have put him in any position in this race and he still would have won so easily. Satellite miss was next and then charge more, but Chautauqua was just gone up a gear here and slipped away. Choice Discoveries dropped off quickly. So he was very smooth and very balanced throughout the whole run and he just kept building into the gallop. And when I got to the top of the straight, I had really put very minimal pressure on him. And I thought it was time to give him a slap and make him quicken up a little bit, make him hit the line anyway. And he opens up the margin now and he looks pretty good there, winning first up Chautauqua by five. Just lengthened that that easily and cruised into another gear. And there was probably another gear underneath that, but he was only going there to have a hit out and, and dominate the way he did was very surprising, but the manner of ease he did it was the surprising part. It was just a Sunday stroll, really. Pretty comfortable. Yeah, he was. Look, he, uh, he's just very balanced, very happy horse all the way through it. And a little bit of, just the slightest bit of pressure, he was pretty on his game, you know, he switched. He sort of dropped them pretty quick and easy and no, nice horse. Well, I think straight after the race, obviously, I was pretty happy with the riding a winner for him and 
riding him at such an early age, you think, oh, you know, done a good job. And I think Wayne's given me a bit of a spray. He said, why'd you hit him? You should have won. You shouldn't have done that much on him. John was happy though. <laughs> that was the main one, John was happy. He said, there's a couple of really nice three-year-old races in Sydney that he wanted to get him straight up to. So from an early age, he had a pretty big opinion of him and he, he was in a hurry to get him to Sydney as soon as possible. Look, I'm ecstatic with him. Uh, it was always going to be said that uh, manners may be the driving force behind him. I just wanted him to behave. Look, unfortunately, his manners weren't letter perfect, but I thought for the way he normally would be, I thought he held himself together relatively well. But the thing that I'm most proud about Carl was when he was actually in the ring and I asked him to work, he worked magnificently. So, you know, were his manners good? Probably no, no, they weren't. But everyone's got to start somewhere, don't they? And I thought today was the perfect start. He came out and did his job, and, and that's what I wanted him to do. But this is a huge environment for a horse having their first time. Like, this isn't a small show out the back of a country. Country town. This is a big event and, and I think he nailed it this morning, aside from the odd hiccup with his manners, but work nailed it. Everybody knows that Chautauqua is quite sprightly at times and he's got a lot of personality and, and massive character. He was probably on top for me in looks today, he, but um, his antics were a little bit fruity today, so I think he just uh, probably needs a couple more goes and then he'll be a seasoned professional. I'm sure we'll see him winning loads of accolades down the track. Chautauqua's performance today was very much of a horse that's still learning. Um, he was a bit, bit new to it all. The occasion might have got to him a little bit, as it has in the past. It's a little bit of his nature, but he's got a little bit to go as far as a show horse goes. He's um, still learning the trade, but, you know, he looks great. I mean, you couldn't come here today and not absolutely idolise what these people are doing with these horses, the way they shine, the way they perform. They're all just stood there beautifully. They're, the horses are enjoying it, and you can tell by the looks on their faces, and uh, I think everyone's getting a lot of enjoyment from seeing that. So a little bit later on today, we've got a uh, fashions off the track class. I'm looking forward with that with um, obviously Sharky. It's going to be a really good class to see him come out all dressed up. Of course, I will as well. But for now, it's rest. Time to chill out before we go for round two, four o'clock. Unlike Chautauqua that everyone knows in the gates, whilst he's out in this sort of an environment, he doesn't really like standing still. So for me, I'll just keep him walking for the moment to keep him nice and relaxed. So it's kind of a different Sharky that you saw uh, when he was racing. He's learning, and today, if anyone saw his manners earlier this morning, he's, he's challenging. His first day out for me was never going to be about winning, it was always just going to be about getting him to try and relax and, and that's what we're here to do. Should have incorporate the thoroughbred and then the dressing that we wear to celebrate them at race day, so I think it's great. In that particular class then, what the judges were looking for, they were looking for, like any fashions on the field, style, originality, an outfit that matches the horse. And for me, I think we, we nailed it. Black and white, it's pretty much the colour of my horse. For the ladies, 
The runner-up is number 133, Chautauqua and Casey Bruce. So this guy just officially took out runner-up in the off-the-track scenario for fashions on the field. It's been a long day for him, so I think it's a big carrot now and time to go and, and relax. And now I can get changed and look a bit uh, more relaxed myself. For me to come out and have a horse like Chautauqua standing next to me, it just feels amazing. And I couldn't be happier with him. And I'm sure that Rob up there is, is very proud of the day. And I know that his owners will be smiling ear to ear as well. If you're having a bad day, go down and talk to your horse. And then they'll listen to you all day. This fella, I don't know how you explain it. He's my mate now. He'd be so proud. And I miss him. And just to see this horse out and about just means the world to me. And, you know, it was his dream, it was Rob's dream just as much as it was mine to get this bloke going. So to even see him do what he did today, Dad's up there shining. So he's made us, we've both done him proud, haven't we, mate? Yeah, we have, good boy.